look at the, the air missile to threat threats, we see a very complex threat, one that includes many types, missiles, rockets, artillery, mortars, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, airplanes, helicopters, uh, all these things come together. So it's a very complex and evolving threat, and the threats all come together in multiple complex attacks. So to handle a complex threat, you need an integrated solution. So at Lockheed Martin, we look across our whole company and our whole portfolio of systems tying together uh, the best integrated solution. What is the best missile? What's the best sensor? What's the best command and control? And supporting systems to be able to defeat those threats. So what we do is we, we look across our whole portfolio and let's say we have two different radars out there and the radar that normally operates with the missile uh, doesn't see the, the, the track or the threat, but the other radar does. Can you then fire that missile off the second newer radar? And that's what the integration of that capability is. So it's maximizing the capability with a variety of supporting systems, different sensors. That's what we're trying to achieve in the future. And that to me is the true power of the integration. Uh, so there's other examples that uh, you, heard, you saw in the paper just recently for F-35, they did a, a demonstration of where they found a target and they passed that target to a U.S. Marine Corps HIMARS system. And that HIMARS system then launched on the data provided by the F-35. So that's an example of how we would take information from one platform that you wouldn't think would normally operate with a system, but then maximize those two capabilities together. What is the best that we can do to handle a variety of situations and then also have growth capability? Because the threat is always going to change and improve, so you won't want to have to always buy a new weapon system. Can you take existing weapon systems and still have greater capability to defeat the threat or modernize a piece of the system and then increase the capability of something else? And we think that's all possible as we look to the future. So as, so as we look at our missiles and we look at the different threats, we know we have great success in our THAAD missile capability, our PAC-3 MSC capability. They, they defeat a wide variety of threats. But now we look down into taking that technology and what else can we do with that technology? So example, our miniature hit-to-kill missile, very small missile, uh, gain, aimed at uh, defeating rockets, artillery, and mortars, but a very small missile, uh, about two kilos in weight, can it then take that same technology and go after a different threat? So we're even looking into the directed energy field, seeing where is the right place and the right capabilities for directed energy to be used. I'm sure there's going to be a need to transition over time because you want to get at all these different targets and you want to get them in a cost-effective way. So where's that technology taking us and then where's the right place to insert that? But can you insert it in a place where you also have connect, kinetic weapons? So you can use similar command and control, similar platforms. So we're looking at all of those. The, the future is providing a very intricate system, integrating the solutions together, maximizing the capabilities to defeat not just today's complex threat, but the future ones that we don't even know about yet.